Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to get a behind the scenes tour of JSF. We'll cover the following topics. First off, we'll take a look at the components of a JSF application. Then we'll take a sneak peek behind the scenes to see how JSF actually works. Next, we'll discuss the various JSF versions that are out there. And finally, we'll discuss application support for JSF. All right, so we have a lot of stuff in store. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what makes up a JSF application as far as what's required to build a JSF application? Well, a JSF application is basically a set of web pages to lay out components. We'll make use of special JSF technology called facelets. And then also, a JSF application is composed of a set of managed beans. So this is Java code that you'll have in the background for holding your form data and also performing your backend operations like talking to a database. Then also there's an idea of the web deployment descriptor or your web XML. Uh, if you've done some web development before with Java, you may have seen this file before for like servlets and JSPs. Uh, we'll basically put a special configuration in that file to handle the JSF requests. And then optionally, you can have some additional application config files like the faces config.xml. Um, you can drop in some custom objects, components, uh, custom tags, uh, and validators. And we'll talk all talk about all that stuff later, but at a very high level, this is these are the actual components of a um, JSF application. All right, so how does JSF work behind the scenes? So we have a user over here. They're in their browser. They'll submit a request to our application server. This will come into our JSF faces servlet. So this faces servlet is part of the JSF library. You, the developer, you don't have to write this servlet. It's given to you. This faces servlet handles routing the request. Uh, to the appropriate pages. Now this faces servlet um, in the background, it can read information from the faces config file. Uh, it can also make use of managed beans. And these managed beans are basically just uh, beans that hold form data or talk to your backend processes like maybe a database or something. All right, so this faces servlet, it'll determine which page that it needs to route to. It'll route it to that appropriate web page. Um, at the bottom here we have XHTML. Uh, this web page can make use of the managed beans also to maybe retrieve information or display information from the backend system. And this web page is rendered and sent back to the web browser. So this web page, it could have very basic information like, hey, welcome and give the user's name. Or this web page could be more sophisticated where it would display the results of a database query. Uh, but anyway, that's how uh, GSF works at a very high level. So again, web browser makes the request to the servlet, servlet will route it to the appropriate page and the page renders the response. All right, so let's talk about the different versions of JSF. Um, there's a lot of different versions that are floating out there. So if you Google for some JSF tutorials, you may find some outdated information. So I just wanted to just lay out the versions and then um, talk about JSF 2.2. So JSF has been around for a long time. So JSF 1.0 was released in 2004. So that's ancient days, all right? Then there was JSF 1.2 that came out in 2006. Uh, JSF 2.0 came out in 2009, and that was aligned up with a uh, Java EE6. And then most recently is JSF 2.2 that was released in 2013, and that's Java EE7. So when you look for different information like books and so on, you want to make sure that you're using at least JSF 2.2 uh, because there were some significant changes between 2.2 and all the previous versions. All right, now you also wanna make sure that you have an application server that can support JSF 2.2. So you wanna make sure your app server has support for Java EE7 um, or higher. Now there's a new version of JSF that's coming out. I've been checking the different blog posts and so on, and uh, JSF 2.3 is slated to come out um, late 2016, um, early 2017. So you can kind of think it'll hit mainstream around the 2017 uh, timeframe. So just a little indicator there. But you can always go online to Google and you can simply say uh, JSF release date and you should get the latest hits as far as news reports on when uh, JSF is coming out. But anyway, uh, this course will focus on JSF 2.2. In terms of application server support, uh, if you make use of a full Java EE7 server, then the JSF 2.2 libraries are already included. So when I say a Java EE7 server, uh, some examples include JBoss Wildfly 8, Glassfish 4, and so on. So for your given app server, you want to make sure that it supports Java EE7 or higher. 
Um, not all of the servers are up to date, so you want to make sure you look at the actual specs for your server um, accordingly. But I know out of the box that Wildfly 8 and Glassfish 4 already have full support for Java EE7. And so that includes the, J the JSF 2.2 libraries. So the key thing here is that when you deploy your JSF application, there's no need to include the JSF jar files in your app. Um, it's already part of those given uh, server environments. Now, if you want to deploy the Tomcat 8, uh, you can still do that. Um, the only thing is that you simply need to add the JSF libraries, um, preferably JSF 2.2 or higher. So that means that you need to bundle the JSF libraries in your WAR file application. So in your WebF lib directory, you'll need to include those jar files. Um, I'll show you how to do this um, in the next video when we build our Hello World application. So don't worry if you don't totally understand all of this. Um, I'll walk through the steps when we go through our Hello World app and show you uh, which checkbox that you need to set up. Um, in the Eclipse environment for getting this working. All right, but anyway, that's the big thing there. All right, so this wraps up the video. Uh, we covered some good items in this video. Uh, we discussed the components of a JSF application. We also learned how JSF works behind the scenes. Um, I also gave you a discussion of the various JSF versions that are out there. And then finally, we wrapped up by discussing application server support uh, for JSF. Stay tuned. In the next video, we'll actually get our hands dirty. Uh, we'll build a Hello World application with JSF, and then we'll actually deploy it to our application server. See you then.